Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn all about transform parents and children. Let's begin. So we previously covered the various ways to move, rotate, and scale a transform. Now let's see the various interactions between parent and children. As I mentioned in the previous video, the inspector in here, you see the local values. So the parent sprite in here is on 200, and the child is on 100 but the global position is on 300. Again, always keep in mind if you're working in local position space or the global world position space. So let's look at it through code. So here I have a script running on my parent transform. So first of all, let's grab a child reference. In order to do that, let's set up a transform child transform, a reference which we're going to grab through transform.find our child transform. This is the name of the child transform that we want to grab the reference, which is named child transform. So let's print both local and world positions. So let's do a debug.log of the child transform dot position, which is the global position and the local position, which is the local position. And after we do that, let's set the child transform dot position to new vector three on zero, zero, zero and see where he ends up. So as you can see in the console, the world position was on 300, which makes sense since the parent was on 200 and the child on one. So put them both together and the child is on world 300. The local position is 100. And at the end, we set the position, the global position to be on 000. So he ended up in there, which again, if we select in here, we see the local values and the local is on minus two since the sprite is on two that means it is indeed on the global zero zero so always keep in mind what space you are trying to place the transform the same thing applies to the rotation so in here let's print out the euler angles and then the local euler angles and then let's set the global euler angles back to zero so let's see how that goes First, let's rotate the parent by 90 degrees. So as you can see, the spaceships are now pointing upwards. So let's see the code. All right, in the console, as you can see, the global Euler angles show that the child transform is rotated 90 degrees, which again, since it was matching the parent, it was indeed 90 degrees, but the local was at zero. And then we set the global to be at zero. So that put, as you can see, the rotation is now at zero, which means the local rotation is on minus 90. So if you're working in your game and spawning units, I would suggest you only move the parent game object, otherwise things get very messy very quickly. So let's look at how you would manage local and global world spaces. So first of all, let's change the parent name to be spaceship. And inside, instead of having another spaceship, let's have something representative of a health bar. And instead of the spaceship sprite, let's put it a basic rectangle like that. Okay. Let's reset the rotation of the parent spaceship back to zero to make things simple. And essentially we want to move the health bar to the left side, but let's do that through code. So in this case, I would suggest that the only things you change are the health bar local position and the spaceship world position. So you would never change the spaceship local position and you would never change the health bar world position. That way you keep things nice and simple. So on start, let's first grab a reference to our health bar transform. And then let's set the health bar transform dot local position to new vector three. And in this case, let's put it on minus 0.3 F and zero, zero. All right, so let's see if that positions it correctly. And yep, there you go. The health bar is behind the spaceship, great. And now an update, let's move the spaceship, just to make sure that the child and parent both move in tandem. So in here, do the transform dot position, which again, on the parent, we want to move the global position. And we're going to set it to transform dot position and increase it by new vector three, let's say 0 0.01 and 0, 0. Just move the spaceship to the right. Yep, as you can see, the spaceship is moving to the right side and the child health bar is positioned correctly and does not move. Great. All right, so now let's dynamically spawn a child object. So on our code in here, let's first create the new game object. Let's call it child game object and it will be a new game object. 
let's give it the name child game object. And now in order to set the parent, we do child game object dot transform dot set parent to the parent that we want, which is this transform. So in here we are creating a brand new game object and then we set that game objects transform parent to be this very transform. So let's run the code and see our hierarchy. Yep, there's the spaceship and there's the newly created game object. You can also cycle through all the children of a transform. You can do a very simple for each transform child in transform. And this will cycle through all the children in this transform. So let's simply print out the transform. So do a debug.mod of the child. So that should print out our health bar and then the child game object. Let's see. Yep, there you go. Health bar of type transform and child game object also of type transform. You can also cycle through the children with an index. So do a for in e equals zero in less than transform dot child count i plus plus. So in here, instead of using child, we use transform dot get child at the index, so i. And again, let's run the code and it should say the same thing as previously. Yep, there you go. We are still cycling through all the children of this transform. One thing that is also very useful, especially in setting up your UI, is to modify the sibling position. The UI sorts visibility based on the hierarchy position, so objects below in the hierarchy show on top of the ones before. So in here, let's make another game object. Let's duplicate the health bar and put it on a different color just so we can see the visual representation. Okay, so if we run this, you can see on the hierarchy, we got the health bar, the health bar blue, and then the child game object. So now let's go through code and set the health bar to be at the bottom. So the way we do that, we pick up the health bar transform and execute the function set as last sibling. And we're going to execute this after we spawn the child game object. Yep, as you can see, first we got the blue, then we got the child, then we got the health bar. You can also do the reverse. So instead of using this one, let's set the child game object dot transform dot set as first sibling to move this one to the top. Yep, as you can see, first the child, then the health bar, then the health bar blue. Again, the hierarchy position is very important in the UI since that is what defines which sprite is on top of which. So there you have it. We covered the various ways that transform parents and children interact. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.